<clears throat> welcome to Blessed Trinity Catholic Church. We offer a special welcome to all who are joining us as we celebrate the 20th Sunday in Ordinary Time and Father's Day. Safety guidelines and social distancing must be maintained due to the increase in Corona-19 or in COVID-19 COVID cases in Pinellas County. We strongly urge everyone to wear a mask. <clears throat> In charity and to protect everyone, we will refrain from congregational singing. And while we hope that you will joyfully participate fully in the mass, we ask that you please make your responses quietly behind your masks. For communion, we ask that you prayerfully consider receiving in the hand for the protection of all. The Eucharistic ministers will come to you. You may use hand sanitizer prior to receiving communion. And when the Eucharistic minister reaches your pew, Please stand, lower your mask, and remove gloves if you are wearing them. After assume, consuming the Eucharist, you should replace your mask and kneel or sit. The ushers will not take up the collection. There are baskets in the front and side doors for your offerings. After the dismissal, we ask that you please follow the direction of the ushers so that we may have a safe and orderly exit from the church. Confessions are available by appointment only at this time. Please call Father Wayne's cell phone to make a private appointment. The number is posted on the confessional door and on the posters outside the church. As we honor our fathers today, we hear Jesus reassure his disciples by reminding them of the tender care of his heavenly father. Our heavenly father watches over us assiduously, faithfully, lovingly, every hair on our head is accounted for. Let us recall all the times our own fathers, grandfathers, uncles, and father figures, living and deceased, made us feel safe and secure with their vigilant care. At this Mass, we remember in our prayers, Hernando Marin. So that we might celebrate together as brothers and sisters in Christ, please stand and welcome our visitors and one another. Fathers living still in spite of dungeon fire and sword. Oh, how our hearts beat high with joy whenever we hear that glorious word. Faith of our fathers, holy faith, we will be true to thee till death. Faith of our fathers, we will strive to in all nations unto thee. And through the truth that comes from God, we all shall then be truly free. Faith of our fathers, holy faith, we will be true to thee till death. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. This weekend we celebrate Father's Day. The Father is the most important part of the family, along with his wife. But it's the Father and the wife that make the family, and the family is the nucleus of civilization. Both partners are a unique part of that family structure. And so as we remember fathers in particular this weekend, let us also pray for them as they carry out their vocation. And as we come together, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, 
that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do <coughs> through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. <coughs> Therefore, we ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie. Son. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord. God, heavenly King, O oh God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, through the grace of adoption, chose us to be children of light. Grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side. Denounce, let us denounce him. All those who were my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped, then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble, they will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe mind and heart, let me witness, witness the vengeance you take on them, for to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
have become an outcast to my brothers, a stranger to my mother's children, because zeal for your house consumes me, and the insults of those who blaspheme you fall upon me. St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man sin entered the world, and through sin death. And and thus death came to all men inasmuch as all sinned. For up to the time of the law, sin was in the world, though sin is not accounted when there is no law. But death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin after the pattern of the trespass of Adam who is the type of the one who was to come. But the gift is not like the transgression, for it is by the transgression of the one the many died. How much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. From the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Matthew. 
Jesus said to the twelve, Fear no one. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs on your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. The past few days I've been doing my homily and thought I was all set until I received a message from Deacon Greg Kandra the other day. And it changed my whole outlook on what I was going to talk about today. It's a very unique story that he presents and I want to share it with you. In 1905, a Canadian American writer by the name of Javilla Martin was traveling with her husband through Elmira, New York, and visited some friends of theirs, the Doolittles. The Doolittles had very serious physical limitations. Mrs. Doolittle was bedridden, and her husband was confined to a wheelchair. Chivilla Martin wrote about the trip many years later. Despite their afflictions, She wrote, they lived happy Christian lives. One day my husband commented on their bright hopefulness and asked them their secret. Mr. Doolittle replied, the eye is on the sparrow and I know he is watching me. Chivilla Martin was moved by that response. And of course, the rest is history. Not long after she turned that simple expression of faith into one of the most celebrated hymns of the 20th century. One made famous by Ethel Waters and Mahalia Jackson. It draws its imagery, of course, from the gospel we have just heard. But it speaks in a way to the world we live in right now. And as the lyrics put it, let not your heart be troubled, his tender word I hear, and resting on his goodness, I lose my doubts and my fears. Though by the path he leadeth, but one step I may see, his eye is on the sparrow, and I know that he watches me. The hymn is about trusting in God, But the gospel from Matthew this weekend is more demanding. It is about courage and it is about boldness. It is also not insignificantly about suffering or even martyrdom. It's important to remember the context. Just before this passage, Jesus has told the 12, You will be hated by all because of my name. But then here he adds something even more. Fear no one. You are worth more than many sparrows. In case we missed the point, three times in this passage, 
Jesus tells his followers, do not be afraid. They were the opening remarks when Pope John Paul II came on the loggia and we were introduced to him as the new pontiff. His first words spoken were, be not afraid. This is hardly breaking news. He has told us this before. We heard it recently in Jesus's first words after the resurrection. And here it is again. Do not be afraid. How we need to remember that. How we need to remember that we are not alone. God is watching us, paying attention to us, and standing behind us. It is a message for all times, especially the times in which we are living. This Sunday, we find ourselves wrestling and wearing all of the things that have been happening in our country. Today, we wear green again in ordinary time. But I think we can all agree that these times are anything but ordinary. Yet the gospel assumes God is near. He is with us in moments of uncertainty, hardship, and upheaval, and chaos which we have been experiencing. He is watching us, worrying with us, walking with us, standing with us. God stands with us so that we can stand with him and for him, so that we might have the courage to stand for mercy and compassion, for justice and dignity, for healing and for hope. God stands with all who seek to live the gospel and witness in the name of his son. He stands beside all who suffer. The psalm reminds us, see you lowly ones and be glad. You who seek God, may your hearts revive for the Lord hears the poor and his own who are in the bonds he spurns not. Fear no one, be not afraid. There's much that seems uncertain. The pandemic changed everything. But some things don't change, including God's love for his people. No matter what hardship or affliction, no matter what obstacles or trials we face, we are not alone, for God is there. He is there in our loneliness and our isolation. His eye is on the sparrow, but that is just the beginning. His eye is on priests who have been saying mass day after day, praying for the world and often anointing those homebound or in hospitals, if he's able to even go. His eye is on nurses and doctors, frontline caregivers. His eye is on the sick and those who love them. His eye is on those who grieve or who worry. Those who have been laid off or fear what the future may hold. His eye on those who stand for justice in our country and around the world and who often pay the price, sometimes with their own lives. And of course, the eye is on the persecuted, Christians in forgotten corners of the world, faithful men and women and children who continue to practice their faith in spite of everything. The Lord hears the poor. That includes those who lack not only money or security, but those who know the poverty of not being treated with dignity or not having a voice. There are many ways of being poor. Last week, Pope Francis issued his annual message for the World Day of the Poor, which will be observed in November. The Holy Father reflected on the helplessness many are feeling right now during this pandemic and the chaos that we have experienced in our own country. We feel poor and less self-sufficient because we have come to sense our limitations 
and the restriction of our freedom, he wrote. The loss of employment and of upper opportunities to be close to our loved ones and our regular acquaintances suddenly opened our eyes to the horizons <clears throat> that we had long since taken for granted. But he reminded us of something he wrote in Lodato Si. Now, he said, is a good time to recover the conviction that we need one another, that we have shared responsibility for others and the world. I would add, it is a good time to remember that we really are not alone. The month of June is traditionally dedicated to the Sacred Heart of Jesus as we lift up our hearts and pray to his Sacred Heart. We pray for a strengthening of our own hearts, especially now, that we may love fearlessly, live courageously, and hope endlessly. Fear no one. Do not be afraid. Chavilla Martin's friend, Mr. Doolittle, got it. He understood. May we use this precious time to understand as well. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know that he watches me. Finally, this weekend, as I said earlier, we celebrate Father's Day. Over the years, I have collected many stories about fathers and I want to share a few of with you today. There is not an institution that is more vital to our nation's survival than the American family. Here the seeds of personal character are planted, the roots of public virtue first nurtured through love and instruction, discipline, guidance, and example. We learn from our mothers and fathers the values that we will shape our private lives, and our public citizenship. The days of our childhood forecast our lives, as poets and philosophers long have told us. The childhood shows the man as morning shows the day. And John Milton wrote, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Solomon tells us clearly the future is in the care of our parents. Such is the responsibility, the promise, and the hope of fatherhood. Such is the gift our fathers give us. Our fathers bear an awesome responsibility, one that they shoulder willingly and fulfill with a love that asks no recompense. By turns, both gentle and firm, our fathers guide us along the path from infancy to adulthood. We embody their joy, their pain, and their sacrifice, and inherit memories more cherished than any possessions could ever give us. Many years ago, there was a tribute found in a Dear Abbey column. It states, a great man died today. He wasn't a world leader or a famous doctor or a war hero or a sports figure. He was no business tycoon and would never see his name in the financial pages. But he was the greatest man who ever lived. He was my father. I guess you might say he was a person who was never interested in getting credit or receiving honors. He did corny things like pay his bills on time, go to church on Sunday, and serve as an officer in the PTA. He helped us kids with our homework and drove our mom to the grocery store every Thursday night. He got a great kick out of hauling his teenagers and their friends around to and from football games. Dad enjoyed simple pastimes like picnics and the park and pitching horseshoes. Tonight is my first night without him. I don't know what to do with myself. So I am writing to you, dear Abby, and I'm sorry now for the times I didn't show him proper respect, but I am grateful for a lot of other things. I am thankful that God let me have my father for 15 years, and I am happy 
that I was able to let him know how much I loved him. That wonderful man died with a smile on his face and fulfillment in his heart. He knew that he was a great success as a husband, a father, a brother, a son, and a friend. Not all dads appear to be sterling at first. A man tells of someone he knew named Al, who had lost a son. Then Al's wife left him, and he had to raise the other child, then six years old, alone. Unable to cope, he turned to alcohol, and eventually he lost everything. He died alone in a motel room. The man continues his story about Al. What a complete failure, I thought, and what a totally wasted life. As time went on, I began to reevaluate my earlier harsh judgment. You see, I knew Al's adult son, Ernie, one of the kindest, most caring, most loving men I have ever known. I watched Ernie with his children and saw the free flow of love between them. I knew that kindness and caring had to come from somewhere. I had not heard Ernie talk much about his father. One day I worked up enough courage to ask him, I am really puzzled by something. How I know your father was basically the one who raised you, but what on earth did he do that you became such a special person? And Ernie sat quietly and reflected for a few moments. And then he said, from my earliest memories as a child, until I left home at 18, my dad came to my room every night, gave me a kiss, and said, I love you, son. Tears came to my eyes as I realized what a fool I had been to judge Al as a failure. He had not left any material possessions behind, but he had been a kind and loving father, and he left behind one of the finest, most giving men I have ever known. My dear people, on Father's Day each year, we express formally a love and a gratitude whose roots go deeper than conscious memory can recite. It's only fitting that we give this special day to pay tribute to those men, our natural fathers, our adoptive fathers, our foster fathers, who are, deserve our deepest respect and devotion. It is equally fitting as we recall the ancient and loving command to honor our fathers, our fathers that we resolve to do so by coming ourselves priests, parents, and citizens who are worthy of honor. On this day, let us never forget that the fathers that gave their last full measure of devotion to their country and the children and wives they have left behind that loved them so much. Tragically, their father will not be there for them to tuck them in tonight and tell them how much they love them. And now let us stand and recite the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We call to mind our needs assured that God knows and cares for us in every single detail of our lives, right down to each hair on our heads. Our response will be, Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the church, that we may have the confidence to proclaim the good news from the housetops. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously, graciously hear, us. hear us. That all nations may come to appreciate the value of harmonious relationships with their neighbors. For a peaceful end to the cycle of racism in our country, leading to a world filled with peace, understanding, and respect for all. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all of our fathers and father figures who have loved and guided us throughout our lives, those who are living and those who have passed on to eternal life, that they may always enjoy God's loving care. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. For all who depend on the fruitfulness of the earth for their livelihood, that they may be blessed with good weather and a successful growing season this summer. Lord, hear us. <clears throat> for all of us in this faith community, that God may shelter us from all our fears and comfort us in our distress. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the sick, especially those affected by the coronavirus, and for all caregivers, that they may know Christ's healing power and love. For the deceased of our parish, especially Gordon Hunter and all the faithful departed, and for those for whom we wish to pray in the silence of our hearts. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Loving God, may our great care and compassion for your people inspire us to be generous with your care and compassion for all those in need. We make this prayer and all of our prayers through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of now being called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into our own wonderful light. And so with your... With, our, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all of the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Gregory, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all of the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
And now I'd like all fathers to please stand. Don't be bashful. God, our Father, in your wisdom and love, you made all things. Bless these men that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth and grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God be with you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Congratulations. Let us pray. I should also point out that Bob and Genevieve Joyner will be celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary tomorrow morning. And on Monday, Earl Murray will celebrate his 93rd birthday. I understand he's coming to Mass. This will be his first outing in many, many months. So we look forward to seeing him, hopefully. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Again, just as a reminder, at the recessional, Father will recess out. We'd ask you to stay in your pews. Once Father is out, then the ushers will come forward and lead you out and release you row by row to maintain social distancing. So please wait for them to release you. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Fathers, whose almighty hand leads forth in beauty all the starry band of shining world in splendor to the skies, all grateful songs before thy throne arise. Thy love divine hath led us in the past. In this free land by thee our lot is cast. Be thou our ruler, guardian, guardian, and stay thy word our law thy paths are chosen way